folks and welcome to Gourmet's Shed. Well this week we're looking at uh, these coaches that uh, came out with a, a magazine some years ago and uh, the uh, first issue of the magazine was quite cheap and you got a coach with it so uh, I know I went out and probably a lot of other people went out and bought a whole heap of these. I got uh, five of them. Uh, at the time uh, five of these for um, about the cost of uh, one uh, Backman coach and I thought well you know if there's anything wrong with them uh, it can be fixed up later on and that that's always been the plan uh, the, the plan at the moment is to eventually convert these uh, bogies on these things over to uh, Backman Mark 1 uh, bogies and that'll make them really free running and uh, that sort of brings us on to uh, the subject of free running uh, the way these things are set up um, I'll just take the bogey off. Uh, they have a um, a wheel set up which is basically two uh, cast wheels and they're slipped over the end of a, a plastic axle and if I can take one out I'll show you. So you can literally just twist a wheel off like that and that, that's all it is. So. I'll try and get that a bit closer. So it's, it's this little uh, metal wheel which fits on this plastic axle, which is, you know, the, it, it's okay. It works, but when you look at the, um, the uh, pinpoint bearing on the end, well, it's not actually pinpoint, uh, should it, I should say the pinpoint axle. It's not pinpoint. It's quite a dull end on it. And uh, so what it means in the end is that um, when you spin these wheels, they don't run anywhere near as freely as, say, a Backman would. Um, it also had um, a spring uh, set up on the, on the coupling so that it would sort of pull out and retract and all that sort of thing, which was giving me no end of trouble on my railway here. So I just converted that to um, a fixed coupling and uh, I used part of the original design there and just cut it down and super glued it on. Uh, so I thought well you know I'd, I'd got that far with them and I was still having I'll just put this wheel back in I was still having problems with uh, some of the coaches derailing I've got a particular point here where they would uh, derail if pushed backwards through it yet everything else goes through it and uh, so I started looking more closely at how uh, these things are set up and tried to work out why uh, they would derail and uh, one of the things I've come up with is the fact that the wheels aren't sitting squarely on the track all the time and you need that for you know if, if it was a loco you need it for electrical contact but you need the wheels then in the bogey you need the bogey to be able to pivot in just about any direction so that it, what, regardless of what the coach is doing, the wheels will all, always stay firmly on the track. Now the design of this uh, system here doesn't really allow that because if we look here at the, we'll call it a bearing I suppose, which uh, the bogey pushes up onto, that's quite a big surface area compared to some other makes of um, coaches. So what is happening is that when the bogey rests against that um, and the weight of the coach pushes down on the bogey it's making the bogey sit flat against the coach so if you come over a set of points or a slightly uneven track 
the, the bogey can't move to adapt to the track because it's hard up against the coach. And um, so that's something I realised a bit later on. But initially, uh, what I started doing was I thought maybe the problem was with the wheels. So um, I took the wheels off uh, three of these coaches so far, I think it is. And um, because of their design, you can just take the wheel and put it into the chuck of a drill and use a file and uh, you can... Well, actually, I've, I've turned the wheels down slightly to increase the flange area. But I've also put the file onto the, uh, the pinpoint end of the axle and I've actually turned it into a pinpoint. And uh, for a start, the wheels are much more uh, freer. Uh, this, this is one that I've, I've done. I'll just turn that around. Now, uh, you finish up with shiny wheels as opposed to brown wheels. But, <coughs> but um, these spin quite freely now. Now, this, this is... Um, this is a solution that's on the way to a Mark One, a Backman Mark One bearing. This is a this is a quick fix uh, to give um, consistent running until funds are there to convert over to Backman Mark One bearing uh, bogies. Now the coach itself, it's not a great example. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a fantastic model. Uh, it's got this uh, maroon uh, plastic colour on it, but the basics are there to create something yourself. I mean, you can spray this whatever colour you want, and and you can you can use it as a project, and it turns out quite cheap. Even with a set of Backman bogies on it, it's going to be quite a cheap coach, and it's going to come up pretty good, I think. It's a reasonable representation, uh, and you know all the all the insides come out, so you can colour up uh, the seats and all that sort of thing if you want to. But the, the first thing to do is to get these things running properly. And as I said, that bearing uh, up underneath uh, here, this, this, this is the problem. So I found a way to solve it. And uh, what I started with was actually, see these little, um, how can we put this, these little uh, lugs here that uh, push up through the hole to connect the, the bogey up under the coach. If you, if you pull on those, uh, and I've got to do this one so I'll show you, if you just pull on those, they simply break off. Simple as that. You must think I'm mad doing that, but now you're left with maybe just a little bit of raised area there, uh, which you can clean up with a knife and, and get that nice and smooth. And then um, what you can do then, and uh, I'll have to uh, take one apart, I think, to show you this. But what I've done is I've put a, um, a screw up through there, and I've got a couple of flat washers uh, in between the bogey and the coach. And it allows much more movement in the bogey. I can show you this in a moment. And it allows it to float around as it should and that's the other thing too I mean on these um, on these coaches I think I think that bogey sitting up way too close underneath the the coach for a start I mean it might look alright to you guys but it really restricts the movement and it's quite easy for the wheels to sort of rub under the floor so a couple of small flat washers um, obviously drops it down a bit and just allows it to pivot much better. So I'll, uh, I'll take that one apart and I'll, I'll show you how I've done it. Right folks, we'll just get this little sucker apart. There's three screws in these things underneath and uh, two of the screws are up under the bogey so if you're looking at how to do it, the bogey's got to pop off before you can get all three screws out. But uh, I'll just take the, it's got a weight in there as well. Just take that out. Now uh, yeah, what we've done is I've drilled a hole up uh, through the bogey where those lugs were removed and put a bolt through and it comes up and uh, it's secured on top by a nut. So if we take that nut off, I'll just uh, show you the washer setup. Just put that 
down there. Now, I've super glued one flat washer underneath the floor. As you can see, it's it's a perfect fit for the uh, for the little screw. And then the screw comes up through the bogey, and then I've got another flat washer here. Now, this gives nice smooth movement there. With the original setup, because of the big surface area, you're getting quite a bit of drag on that bogey. I mean, it's all proportional. I mean, it doesn't seem much to us. Uh, we're we're in one to one scale, and this is one seventy six scale. But it took a reasonable amount of pressure to move that. And I wouldn't say it moved freely. So with the washers on there, it just changes the whole ball game and it, and it moves quite freely. Okay, folks, here's the uh, problem point. Uh, this one just here. And uh, I think you'll see that now it's um, quite good. It's always been fine going that direction. But coming back, it would derail. So... Um, that seems to have solved the issue now. And of course it's uh, fine coming through complex sets as well. So there we are. Okay, folks. Cheers. Gourmet.